Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your hosts, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. From baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother Tasia Dash. Guys, the NBA draft is done and um, got some got some solid guys out of it. I mean, pretty unexpected. I, I think all of us thought we were going to trade that pick, but, uh, but no, we got some, uh, some solid dudes from the, the draft and the undrafted free agents as well. I'm pretty si- excited about some of the guys we got um, as far as the UDFAs. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. A couple days before um, free agency officially begins, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the uh, the draft. So um, obviously, we thought we were going to trade the pick, but we kept it. Uh, drafting Jared McCain and in the first round, and then the second round, going and getting a Den uh, a Den Bona from UCLA. Huge fan of, of Bona. Uh, but what was your guys' overall takes on the draft night, how everything unfolded, no trade, and ended up drafting uh, with both our picks? What was your guys' takeaways? Um, I mean, from, as far as me, I, I I just took it as as you didn't have a trade you liked, or you didn't have anything that was ready to you were ready to move on. So you had you know you had guys that you would um, you would take. Um, so. <clears throat> I, I firmly believe that they wanted to trade it first, draft second. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did read something where Kane said that he didn't really talk directly to the Sixers. No, he didn't. He says agent did. And he didn't. Huh? His, His agent, agent, right? Did. His agent did the talking. Yeah. So that's that tells you. I mean, they they, they like from a scouting perspective. Um, but it's interesting. I think it's somebody they liked that they knew they could move forward with if they needed to draft, but their plans were to, to go in a different direction. That was their initial plans that obviously didn't work out or hasn't worked out yet. I mean, this, this pick can still be moved if I believe so until he signs. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was funny uh, when um, Maury was like, I can't wait for you guys to get to know this kid. I'm like, you didn't even talk to him. Right? You need to get to know this kid. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Me? We have to get to know him. You got you, you, you just hired him. You get to know him. Oh, um, That's funny. Um, but yeah, from the sounds of it, I think he wanted to trade back, get a player, and still have a pick. That's what I think he wanted to do. Um, and he said there was an interesting player with a trade back offered, but they decided to stay when it was McCain that was available. Um, which, I mean, yeah, he was their top 10 ranked player, but like I saw a lot of mock drafts that had McCain going around that period anyway. So it wasn't like it was a huge shock. I mean, I saw a lot of mock drafts. He even said it in the uh, presser. He was like, yeah, I was getting upset because I kept seeing, you know, people mocking him to us. Well, then, like, why was he so, like, I mean, you shouldn't be shocked that he was there then if everybody was mocking him to you in the first place. Uh, I get it. I mean, you know, he's, he's a good prospect, and a lot of people, most people love him. Um, some people don't love the the size fit because he is on the shorter side. He doesn't have really long arms. Um, but, you know, uh, he plays bigger. Um, I'll tell you what, in, in his you know, high short – High shorts, uh, 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 short shorts dancing. Got some good quads, dude. You guys you got built quads. So, I mean, for a kid who already has built up quads like that, um, he'll be able to play bigger and not get out muscled when he gets into an NBA weight program eventually. I mean, adds to that, um, to the point where maybe size won't be a limitation. Maybe 
Kyle Lowry can maybe teach him how to play bigger, right? Because Kyle was a guy who wasn't the tallest, but I never thought Kyle was a big time, uh, had size limitations. I never thought he was outmatched by guys that were taller than him. He always made up for it because he played strong, right? He was stout. Um, so another guy, uh, McCain, said that uh, he, his trainer told him to watch film on defensively was Van Fleet, which I think is another pretty good comp for him, too. Um, Van Fleet's someone who doesn't get just bullied around. He is smaller, but he doesn't just get bullied out there. Uh, so that's that's cool. I, I liked um, – I, I, he's a tireless worker, and I think he'll get better. And one thing that everyone said about him is he's always ready for the moment. And he's always cool, calm, calm and collected. So when he does have to get up on there and and um, and play, I think he'll take the moment and run with it. I think he'll just get better. So I think his attitude screams that, which is awesome. So, so you said someone told him to watch Van Van Fleet defensively. Yeah, they said watch. Did uh, they? Say, <laughs> they said they, his trainer told him to watch a uh, uh, film on Van Fleet. I, th- I thought it was Van Van Fleet's defense. Yes, it was. It was his defense. Defensively, like mm-hmm. that's what he. That's what he was told. His trainer yeah. told him to. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's a horrible um, recommendation. <laughs> I wouldn't say it, man. It's that's a horrible. Man, that's a horrible, horrible recommendation. Guy. Yeah, that's a horrible recommendation. Who would you ask like, me to watch know, film on? That's like telling me to watch me for shooting. In my opinion, that's what that is. No, I don't want to dog your shooting. Right I'm <laughs> just saying, like defensively, like I would never, I would never recommend anyone to watch Fred just because he's smaller. I would never watch anyone. I would never recommend a, a guy that's coming to the league to watch him defensively like to me if you want to learn how to play deep you watch the guys that do n- defend well and see what they do and how they do it you don't go and watch a guy that struggles defensively i, I don't understand that like that logic just because he fights and, and like no you 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 the guys that do it well fight too Um, who would you tell him to go? Uh, who, what undersized guard would you tell him to watch film on? First off, what is what is undersized? Like, how big is he? I think he's like six two. Really, six two and a half, maybe six three, maybe maybe shoes. Six, I, mean, three? I, think, I think he's like six the, two two oh five. The issue is the issue is going to be, um, how he's going to play for the Sixers because if if he's just guarding point. Guards, he's not really undersized. I that's probably the assumption that him and Maxi play together at some point, right? But would Maxi guard the bigger guy, or would Maxi just guard the the least talented person? You Capable know what I'm saying? Guy? No, I'm just saying the you know you want to take your best score. You don't want to guard the best scoring. Like we played Minnesota, which one are you gonna put on Anthony Edwards? See, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at Fred's tape to learn how to guard Anthony Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. We played Denver. We played Jamal Murray. We we, we gonna watch Drew Holiday's tape or Fred's tape? We gonna watch Marcus Smart's tape or Trey Young's tape? The Van Fleet I'm saying defensively. I'm not talking about as a player. Those guys are. Fred, Trey, they ballers. I'm saying, but defensively, I'm going to look at those guys and see what they're doing to have success in the league. So just like offensively, ago, I'm saying, just like offensively, I'm going to go look at Fred and Trey and see what they do to be creative at that size. So in 2022, Fred just missed out on second team all defense. He got he got first team votes and second team. I, votes. I told I told y'all that the the voting for all defense is the worst thing that ever. I played with Allen Iverson for all those years, and I only had more votes than him one time. And Allen yeah. would never come on television and say on anything and say I was better defender. So the voting that means nothing to me, no, absolutely nothing. I'm saying watch the game when you when you when I was seeing Fred play defensively when I watched him play. He became a liability because of his size. Teams were going yeah. at him because Toronto wanted to switch and do all that stuff, and they couldn't do it. Yeah, it's true. 
So now maybe when he was more of a six man, his defensive presence was different because he was asked to do less offensively. But if you watch him in Houston, like that's that's not what when I see him, I see him as tough, a gamer. But I don't I don't look at him and say, well, I need to have somebody watch him defensively because he's short. I don't see that. I tell him to watch film on Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry's six foot. I'm saying Kyle's tough, and I'm saying I would say Kyle before I would say yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't say either is what I'm saying because. I don't think that's how he's going to have to defend like those two guys. Like, I don't think he will have to be that type of defender. I mean, he he has a, a better example right there to play with the Sixers and Melton. He's more like that than them. That's true. Melton does have really long arms, though, compared to him, though. Like, really, like a lot longer than him. Yes, but the, but the presence and the feet and how you move and, and where, how you play your body, how you play angles is still more similar to Melton than it is those guys. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. He 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 don't have the built to do what Kyle did the, um did when he's been playing. They they're not built the same. So he don't yeah. have the the body structure to be able to play behind guys and and challenge them and try to hold them up if they back him down. Be a little quads. Farther, lower center of gravity. I'm just saying, having a lower center. I know you can have that, but he he won't be the first guy in the NBA with strong legs. Other people have strong legs too. You you know what I'm saying? So. But if you have strong legs and you're not strong up top, people just they're gonna back still back you down. Yeah. So I, that's why I'm saying, like, I, I don't think it is a is a good comp, not necessarily because saying that those guys aren't good defenders. I'm just saying I don't view him as that type of defender. Yeah, Melton with shorter arms is a good one. That's that, that, that's a that's a good that's a good goal to be. Um it would be hard for him to watch film on Melton though, too, because Melton compensates when he gets beat with his long arms being able to catch up. He won't be able to do that, right? So he's going to need to find someone with more of his measurements. Um, it's yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I get what you're saying, but yeah, I mean, I would, I yeah, would. I mean, watch. Look, I mean my, my thing is, is it? Um, I don't, I don't, I didn't look at the Sixers drafting him as they're drafting him as we figure out he's going to be our defensive lockdown guy. That, yes, I, that's oh, I agree. Yeah, I think this is people worried that about may be, that may be needed for him to consistently get on the court, but that's with not Maxie how I view it. Yeah, with, with Tyrese for sure. Well, then, then if that's what we're talking about, then um then we we talking sideways, talking about we talking about this and then talking about building a team to win the championship. Like I don't know how we can talk about both. Yeah. But uh, Eric, because uh, it was kind of a mixed bag with uh, certain, some fans love this pick, some fans didn't like this pick. Um, what what do you like about this pick, and uh, how good of a fit is he with um, with, with our team? Obviously, we only have three guys on the roster right now, but how good of a fit? You know what he's good at. How I good mean, of a fit I, is that? I think I think the thing that he he does is, and when I watch him play, um, he made shots. He made timely shots. Um, shot the well, shot the ball well. So if he can. If that can transfer for him, that's always a, I've, I've always said shooting is always a plus. So I I've kind of envisioned him being sort of that type of player, that type of role, coming in and maybe scoring and 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 you know playing some guard or just being sort of a spark off the bench. That's how I viewed him um, because I didn't I didn't view him as a guy that played a lot of minutes with Maxi. Maybe play some, and maybe play when Maxie's not on the court. Um, so I'm, I'm not necessarily against it, um, but I, I just think if you, he's a good pick if we're getting our pick and we're keeping him, and we're having a guy that we feel like, if needed, he can contribute. Like campaign's so, role. Yeah, if, if he's needed, he could contribute. Yeah. Um, um, so I think he's capable of that. Yes, I do think he's capable of that. It's just hard to tell whether it's a great pick because we don't really know how our, our roster is going to shake out. So if you go and all of a sudden you trade for Donovan Mitchell, then it's really not a great pick, is it? You know what I'm saying? You could have addressed some other things. Mm, yeah. 
Yeah, right. As it stands right now, he's replacing Payne's role right now, today. And he makes like double what Payne made. So, you know, he is cost control for four years, five years. Well, I mean, Melton's a free agent too, correct? Yes. So the uh, the other guy that we drafted was uh, Adam Bona from um, UCLA. Uh, probably one of the most uh, a lot of people a lot of these draft experts are saying he's one of the most uh, pro ready guys um, uh, as far as of, of the big man position. Um, so what did you think of the pick and what does this mean for uh, Paul Reed, Eric? And what does this mean for bringing in a backup five like an Andre Drummond type of guy? I think that they'll take a serious look at him with his athletic ability and his size if he's able to impact it in some kind of way then you may not get a veteran and you may and one of those guys may be gone um i think people are seeing the kind of the impact that lively had with the mavericks yeah that's very um, true and and you and you, you find someone that's like you know this Live active body run rebound and they don't have to call a play for him and they can still get a double double. I think that that kind of helped him. I'm surprised that he I could have you know envisioned him going a little higher than that, but I think he's You're in a good to. place if, he, if, if he's um coming in and able to allow us to play a different way when um Joel was out the game. He's a lob threat. So being a lob threat, um, you know, they have to defend you. They have to defend you. They have to defend you at the rim. Which means that, you know, someone in most cases have to be attached to you. If not, you know, it's two points. Yeah. And defensively, he's a, he's a problem, too. Uh, and uh, only two years at UCLA, sixth overall in blocks in a, in the in UCLA's uh, record books. That's that's I think that's wild to me. I mean, UCLA's. Got, got some guys there in the past, so six six overall in the two years playing that pretty yeah. well. A seven four wingspan, woo! It's no joke. Yeah. Uh, he, he said he said a guy he uh, modeled his game after was Giannis, so potentially we got a you know a little Giannis, a little Giannis light. There you go. That, that's a little better, stuff. right? If you're gonna watch film, you watch the best, right, Eric? He ain't watching Van Fleet. Yeah, I'm right? just saying. <laughs> I'm not, uh, don't. Don't put that in my mouth. I didn't say what not don't watch Fred. I what said would the, that would be, the be my recommendation to watch. Can watch uh, no, <laughs> I said that wouldn't be my rec- recommendation to watch them defensively. I said you, you have other guys I would recommend for you to defend watch defensively. That's what I said. Don't put words <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> that would be like uh Bono watching like uh Bobby Portis for like defensive tips. No, I'm no, I'm just saying in general. So I I'm just saying my, I would recommend him to watch guys that I know that how to get over a pick and roll. They're able. They're they're not a liability if they switch. Um, and all of that. No, defensively, I think guard, it's a great person for him to watch. Vers, vers, versatile players. You know what I'm saying? Taller players, shorter player, quicker player. That that's what yeah. you got to watch. Like, what do they do differently? How do they do it? How where where are they feet? How do they play the angles? Do they pressure? Do they fake at them? What what do they do with the, based on who they're defending? When they have a guy that shoots it from deep, but he can bounce, put the ball, but he can bounce it too. That's you should watch that. Yeah, no, no, no. I agree. I think Giannis is a great guy for Boner. I was just I was just joking around, but I think Giannis is a good person defensively for Boner to watch. Actually, I think he's all the things you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, Giannis is good. I mean, it's just the issue is he's not going to have. I know, especially with the Sixers, he's not going to have the ball in his hands that much to be able to kind of impact the way Giannis does. Oh, I, I was just talking about defensively. Yeah. He's just on defense, like the versatile defending, guarding smaller guys, finding angles, recovery, using his long arms to recover. Um, I saw a couple of them where he got beat, and he just packed it at the rim, recovering. Yeah. Um, so impressive. Uh, it's awesome. I, I think he could definitely grow into that role, too. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be against a Drummond for the right price still. Because I don't want to count on him taking that role and running with it. I think I think if we did that and he didn't live up to expectations, if we're trying to be a championship team, I don't think you can count yeah. on that, right? Um, yeah. You brought up Lively, which is great. They still traded for Gaffer, right? So like, yeah. even they liked what Lively was bringing. They were still like, you know but, what? But but the, the 
The difference is we have Joel. They didn't have Joel. I know. That's true. That's true. Yeah, because that yeah, they don't have that. They didn't need to find two guys to make into one. Um, that's why I wouldn't want to spend a lot. Like, I mean, Gavin makes a good amount. I wouldn't want to spend 12 to 15 on a insurance policy to Joel, but I mean, if Drummond comes to the right place, a right price, I wouldn't mind it. Um yeah. I definitely think Paul Reed's going to be traded. I think that I think this signals probably the end for Reed. If I had to, if I had to predict that, um, I know we can trade Reed and bring back more salary. We could, we could bring back up to fifteen million for Paul, um, yeah. which I think once we start spending that do re me, we're going to need to um, find angles to like add more salary to our um, to our overall cap. Um, but you know. Um, I saw some guys call him the best backup Embiid. Well, are already the best backup Embiid's had. Uh, I don't know about all that, but um, a lot to put on him already. But it's definitely looking good. I, I'd love to see him get those minutes and contribute. They say he can contribute day one. So if he is the backup, he will. I mean, especially if Joel misses that you know that sixty-five game limit of MVP, he's going to see. Uh, he's going to be able to contribute day one. We'll see. I'm curious, why do you guys think he fell in the draft? Because I like like you, Eric, I thought there was no chance we were going to get Bono. I thought he was going to go way further, uh, um, way higher than he did, and I'm surprised we were able to get him where he did. Uh, why do you think he fell in the draft? Uh, the, guys, I, I'm, I don't spend any time trying to predict or think about why guys drop in the draft. We just watch guys get drafted because of their relationship with someone. Like, I don't, I don't think it – um, trying to bring logic to the, the draft and why and how they pick people, I, 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 I have them beyond knowing what 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 it yeah. is they um, they're thinking about. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's so hard to break. Well, yeah. at this point, it worked out in our favor. We got a guy yeah. that we loved at that pick, so beneficiaries for sure. I'll yeah, love it. Um, so moving on to uh, kind of a mixed bag of stuff that's gone on since our last uh, show. So obviously, Mikael Bridges is now a New York Nick. Um, OG Ananobi resigned to the Knicks. Uh, and Paula George apparently wants to stay on the West Coast. And Jimmy Butler doesn't want to make a decision until next year, reportedly. Um, so Sixers fans are nervous that Maury might try to delay making changes, big changes, until uh, another opportunity presents itself later on in the year. <sighs> I don't want to have to, I don't want to hear Maury say, uh, just wait till the trade deadline kind of thing. But um, do you think it would be the right move to hold off on going all in if they don't love any of the available players or is now the time to take action? Now, I, I think you, whenever you feel like you can take, make the move to get a player that you like and you want and you feel, feel can help you accomplish the goal of winning the championship, you have to make that move. I, I just think you have to make it, whether it's now, later, when, whenever it is, because um, you got teams in the East that got better, a lot better. You got an Eastern Conference team that won the championship, that's bringing that paid everyone that still have guys coming back, and we'll add yep. some players. Yeah, um, you know, you have a team that down south that, if healthy, can beat anyone. You have a team in Wisconsin, if healthy, can beat anyone. So we gotta we, we gotta get better, man. We gotta do it. You gotta you gotta make it happen. I don't think you can string this out. Like we 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 did all this stuff so we can have all this salary cap. So you know now is the time. Just like just like with the players, we did all that regular season stuff and came down to the players. They like okay, now is the time to perform. Okay, more now is the time to perform. Let's see. Would you say make that move even if it's someone they don't love? Let's say he checks six out of the eight boxes they're looking for. Would you still say do it? Well, this is what I'm saying. All these relationships is what all these people have. You got to know what you're getting into. You got to somehow know or feel confident that what you can get. If you have the correct, if you have all this salary, what's the, what's the reason for building all this salary if you can't get a player? You you don't know you don't know if you can get a player or not. I'm I'm confused with that. I'm confused with having all this cap space and can't get a guy to commit. But I've always said this. 
it's been hard for Philly to get free agents. Yep. It's, it'll always be hard for Philly to get free agents. Yep. So, I don't know. Like, what the, the free agent that everyone's been talked about, I said it weeks ago when I was like, I don't know if he would lead the West Coast for Philly. I, I said that. I don't know. Yep. Now, these guys yeah. make so much money. They make so much money now that it's not like it was in the past where a guy get a deal, he like, I'm going to the highest better. Whereas now, them guys could take a couple million less and be and be good. Yeah. It's more about the year. It's more about the years now. The years and where they where they live, where they want to be. I mean, it's 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 not like here's the thing about it, it's not like we have a team that's and this is just my perspective of conversations that I've had with other people. Okay. You have teams that people feel like they're right there at the cusp of winning the championship. I don't think people feel like we're there. They feel like we're below those teams that are on the cusp of winning the championship. So from a player's perspective, if you're taking that money and you're going to Philly and now all those expectations are there, are you able to go there and do any better than they've done the last few years? Get past the second round. What player can we go get that's a free agent right now that you feel like we as close to a lock of getting out of the second round as ever? Well, if he becomes a free agent, I mean, that would be only – it's only yes, one if, choice. If someone besides LeBron James, if they become a free agent. It would only be Paul George. I don't think LeBron's – especially now with Bronny – Especially with Bronny being there, that's not happening. Yeah, that that'll be the biggest. So, what the hell just happened ever? So, no, yeah, I don't so, think that's so, so what, 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 um, what, 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 who? You, I'll give you two oh, names. Two. You can Paul name two, two people that fit the cap. You know the cap. Two people that that you think could fit the cap that you feel like we're locked to get past. Adding, you're so, saying adding both of them. Hmm. What two guys would you say? Free agents not that's trades the, that's the problem though is that if we do get george we're not going to have enough for the second guy i think there, that's, that's what, the problem that's, that, that's what i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to say i, I would say i would say any combination of george kcp or george even clay that'd be a great two addition that's not you can't that can't happen unless george takes a cut but if he's taking a cut he's going back to la so like what was the point so unless unless he wants that extra year that bad, and we're like, look, we'll give you an extra year. You got to take like you got to share like seven million dollars off this next year's contract to get for us to get KCP. I don't think he'll do that, honestly. Especially when he's going around saying his the highest priority is in a championship. So, but hey, here's the thing though: the Knicks didn't do that. That's not what the Knicks are building, right? I mean, that's not what the Celtics necessarily did. So do we have to go for the best guy or you just go for the best deal and the good fit? Because then you're then you're cooking a little more, yeah. right? So yeah, I, I mean, I, I but just, that's the thing about it. But that but that's but but that's but that's the thing about it. That that's what the Harden deal was. We we did make deals to do it. Yeah, yes. We still I ended know. up in the same place. I know. I know. We did go get Jimmy and we ended up in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. I think if that team stuck so, together, I think we would have made more moves, but that's a the, what if. So the issue the, the, the issue more than anything is, and I don't want to say that we passed our time, um, because I think it's still capable, is the years that we were supposed to be there, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That's the most frustrating part. We were supposed to have at least one, two finals, maybe one, one guarantee final. Um, because based on what you was doing. So now it's like we're still searching. Um, we had a guy, Maxi, come in and 
exceed everyone's expectations. So now you're like, okay, we got both of these guys. Now, now what, what are we going to do? I don't know. We still got those two guys, but we still don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, so oy, it's, a, it's a tough situation. I um, I mean, I go back and forth, right? I don't want to wait. Um holding off, I can see his logic for it. But then if I were in the room and he was like, argue against me for waiting, being the smarter move, if I'm not in love with any of these guys, the Ingrams, the Jeremy Grant, if I'm not in love with these guys, sell me on waiting. Or sell me on not waiting. And I would say, first of all, how do you plan to sell that to Joel, who you already said punt last season for, for this season? How do you sell that to Maxie? who you talked out of doing an extension last year to hold off for this year because you wanted us to have as much money as possible. How do you sell it to ownership who you promised the promised land to? Um, and it, well, that's not even including sell it to the city and the fans. Uh, they don't give a crap about that. But yes, that would be the fourth. How do you sell it to the city and the fans who you said all season, judge me later, judge me later. Well, you keep kicking the can. How can we ever judge you? Right. Um, and I get it from his perspective, too, because it's all the pressure and all, it all comes down to this moment. And he has to sign his name to this and be like, this is my championship plan. I want X guy. I want Y guy. I want Z guy. This is who it is. Even if he's not totally sold behind the scenes on these guys, he can't go out into a press conference to go, yeah, we traded for Ingram. He was the best guy out of the available. I don't love him, guys, but this is the best I could do, you know. It's not like your uh, your dad coming in and being like, "Couldn't go to Hawaii. We're going to uh, we're going to Santa Monica Beach instead. It's the best I could do on my budget, guys. Sorry, he can't say that, right? Like he's got to be like, "This is the plan. This is what we did it for. Ingram's it. Jamie Grant, whoever it is. This is it. This is our team. This is what we've been waiting for. This is our championship roster. He's got to sell it like that, even if he doesn't truly believe in that. So later on, when mm -hmm. shit hits the fan, if it doesn't work again. They're going to be like, well, you told us this is the championship team, Daryl. You said this was it. Well, what do you got to say now? Your, your whole, your whole, I mean, after all the Harden stuff, after all the Simmons stuff, cleaning up for all this moment, I got to say, man, Daryl's legacy kind of comes down to these moves he's making. And I think he knows that. I think his reputation and legacy comes down to this. The magic man who's able to pull it all off. You got rid of the salary. You have the flexibility now. Your cupboard's not empty. You have five tradable picks, so you can make any move outside of uh, outbidding probably OKC and Houston because Nets aren't going all over a player. OKC and Houston are two teams with more assets and um, the capability and the good enough team to, co to, to compete right now to beat us out on any trade. Outside of them, you could pretty much outbid most teams. So this is it. Um, and then my last thing I would argue with him is who's going to be available in five months that isn't available now. Mitchell's probably going to sign his contract. George will sign somewhere or trade somewhere. LeBron's going to be gone. But Butler, who said, I'll wait till next season. So you're going to wait till next season for a maybe on ball, a 36 year old Butler. That's what you're going to wait a year for or Durant. And who knows if the Suns look decent this year, they're not going to trade him. So there's no one going to be available. You can even say as a possibility at this point. So who's out there right now, more or less, is going to be out there? Like, this is it. This is your pool of players. Figure it out. That's it. You could be wrong or you could be right. But you got to try. You can't keep saying, nah, I'll hold off. You can't keep doing that. I mean – Unfortunately, you just got to do make the best plan possible with what the hands you're given and then go from there. Uh, Daryl's a chess player. If you don't like the move, you still got to move. You can't just scrap the game and say, we'll play later. No, like this is the, this is the board, dude. Like, you got to make your move. Like this is that that's it. Um, one thing he also said too in the press conference is we, our plan is to have the best team in the East next year. So Saying that doesn't sound like he's going to kick the can. It sounds like he thinks there's a way out of this to have the best team in the East this year. Whether he delivers, I don't know, 
but it sounds like he's making the move. My rant. Yeah, we'll see. Really surprised you went all in on that, Teja. You're uh, one of the bigger out uh, Maury defenders. I am a big, you know, big Maury fan. I'm so surprised you. I'm surprised you're, you're saying that you want Maury to take action right now. So this is uh, pretty, pretty pretty big for you, buddy. And no, it's not. It's not it's at big, all. I'm a, big, I'm a big look. I'm a big Maury fan, and I'm not. But I'm not going to lie and sit here and say his reputation, especially after the Harden stuff. Like it's. I mean, dude, it's it's led up to this. Yeah. No. I, I, I agree. It's, it's the third installment of the of the uh, of the trilogy, dude. Like the movie's yeah. got to end now. You can't just make a fourth now. You couldn't make up your mind on the ending. You got you got to you got to write it. It's, it's done. Is there anything we can pull from what the the Knicks did with Bridges? You know, trading. I know I know some people said, oh, terrible trade. They traded so many first round picks for for uh, for Bridges, but it seems like Utah is entertaining trade offers for Laurie Markkinen and. I just want I want to get your guys' opinion on. Let's say we did send a Mikel Bridges type deal to Utah for Markinen. How would you guys feel about that? Fine. Um I'm fine with it. Fine. I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I still think you need more, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm fine with it because in the assets you lose, you gain financial flexibility. So I think he makes 17 next year. We'd still have like 43 to spend. You could hypothetically still get a KCP and get another $20, $25 million a year guy. So that's a lot of flexibility to have. And then trade Paul Reed for a $15 million player. So you can you can build up a great roster and be like, all right, well, our cupboard's empty. But that's your team. It doesn't matter. That's your team for the next five years anyway, because we're going to be so far over the cap. You're going to have some minimum. The bulk of your team is going to be minimum players. Yeah, so realistically, you'd have Maxi, Lori, Embiid, uh, McCain, Bona, KCP, um, another guy with another 15 to 20 million to spend. I don't know who that would be. Uh, the Paul Reed trade for, let's just say, DFS, Finney Smith. And then you re-signed Ubre for the MLE. And they think they can get Batum back. That's 10 right there. They still think they can get Lowry back. That's 11. That's a pretty I mean, that's a pretty balanced, good team right there. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. And that's more of a Boston, New York type team too, by the way. Right? But you're able to do that. If you get a I mean, guy, that's what I'm saying. That's 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 Boston, Denver. That's what people are doing now. They're getting teams where they're pretty much saying, "We're going to win this thing with seven or eight guys." You just better hope they stay healthy. Yeah. Well, and that's Boston's what the teams, teams are doing. They, they kind of seen the Denver route, and Denver won with playing basically seven and, and a half guys. Boston basically won playing six, seven, <laughs> maybe eight guys, seven and a half, eight guys. Yeah. Boston still won despite one of their big guys getting hurt. I'm just saying, even that's the only time somebody else played when he didn't play. So, I mean, they basically played six guys, seven guys, you know, 15 plus minutes. Yeah. But with that team, I mean, look, again, you don't have draft picks for a while. I mean, you lost five. Okay. But like, once you re sign Markinen, once you re-sign Maxi with Embiid possible extension with what KCP is going to get with what the other guy you signed is going to get, we're going to be so far over the cap anyway. I mean, it'll be done. We'll be, we'll, 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 we'll be, we're going to be like Boston. We're just going to stay put. This is our team for the next five years. Go over the cap. Done. Yeah. I, I, I'd i be fine with it. New York is a little different though. I will say Marcus, because that bridges is like their final piece. Like they already have pretty much their core there, and then Bridges was like, "Okay, we're adding him. Now we're good." And they they can still trade McBride. They can still add him with Randall and trade him for someone else if they want to. So they still have flexibility, right? Um, us, we'd be getting marketing, and we still have a whole team to build after that. Yeah. So it's a little different. I I don't know which one you'd rather have, um, but. You know, it, it, there is a difference there. We still have to overpay guys to come here, whereas they got guys on really good contracts. Same thing Boston did. They got White on a really good contract. They got Kate, 
uh, Porzingis before he got his monster deal. So, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know a lot of Sixers fans were, were making fun of the Knicks for sending uh, so many draft picks to uh, Brooklyn. But, you know, if uh, if we did that for Mark, I'd be very happy about it. So, yeah, I mean, people, I, I, I didn't necessarily think it was a great pick for what they all gave up, um, but it's a great fit um, for, for the Knicks, even though I, I do think it, it was a lot, but it's still – for them, like like Taja said, they feel like that's the final piece for them to feel like they're a true contender. So we're going to go to the, the final topic here. Um, so uh, we just talked about Lloyd Markkinen. Um, so reportedly he can be half the right price, but the guys who are out there who are um, being rumored that the Sixers are interested in. Uh, so Zach Lowe said he's heard whispers of Jeremy Grant and Brandon Ingram uh, being rumored to the uh, the Sixers. Uh, Clay Thompson, uh, KCP, and DeMar DeRozan, um, and obviously Paul George, but no one has any clue how that's going to go, and we'll find it. We'll get more clarity on that within the next 24 to 48 hours on that. So given all these guys who are rumored to be interested in and some of the guys who are on the trade blocks, I developed a graphic here of uh, four different options um, where I'm just curious where you guys would, would, would lean um, as far as what you'd want our roster to kind of look like. Um, and this is obviously already assuming that we will bring back Batum Ubre and Lowry. So when we look at the graphics of the options, just imagine that we already have Batum, uh, Lowry, and Ubre on the team because that's the the big rumor right now that they are going to be coming back. So we're going to go to the graphic here. Um, so with option A, guys, we have Paul George, Malik Beasley, Gary Harris, D- bringing back to Anthony Melton, and trading for Dorian Finney-Smith. This is option A. Um, okay, so option B, Brandon Ingram. KCP and Dorian Finney-Smith again. And Dorian Finney-Smith has been a popular guy that's been uh, linked to, as far as uh, trading for since Brooklyn is trying to blow it up right now. Um, and then option C, Jeremy Grant, uh, Miles Bridges, Malik Beasley, Gary Harris, Melton. And then the final option here, option D, DeMar DeRozan, Gary Harris, Dante Melton, Malik Beasley, KCP, and Dorian Finney-Smith. So those are the four options of guys who were kind of uh, rumored uh, the Sixers have interest in guys who are on the trade block. So all those four scenarios, where are you guys, uh, where do you guys lean on these uh, four scenarios? And, and, and the smaller boxes are one of those guys, correct? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just one of those guys. Yeah. One of those guys. Um, Oh man, it's kind I, think of I, narr- I, I think I narrowed it down. And and B is that's Finney Smith. Uh huh. I would say, I I think I've narrowed it down to A or D. Wow, <laughs> mine's a total opposite. I've gone lean towards B and Z. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, and I'm leaning okay. towards D because you're getting four players. Um, yeah, I think these are all kind of give you something, but n- neither of them really pop out above the, the others to me. Um. I don't have one that I feel like I would take this one over these immediately. It was, I, yeah. I think I can argue for either one of them, um, except for maybe C. I like, you um, don't like C? I like C a lot. I, I, I think C is your two main guys are too similar. That's my issue with that. With Grant and, and Bridges? Yes, they're too similar. I don't. I don't know about them playing together. How good it would be is what I'm saying. I like that. I like one them because... individually. I'm just not. I, I like them better if they were with maybe someone else. All right. So what if I put Clay Thompson there instead? Then I could easily see C being the one. But I still Clay wouldn't. Clay or KCP. But I still, but I still wouldn't see C 
just popping out. It's like that. I don't, I don't yeah. see neither of them. That's why I, I, I see A and D as probably more immediate right now of trying to make a jump right now. That's why I picked them two because I think those two out of the four, I feel are the biggest punch to take the biggest leap. Yeah. With Joel and Maxi. Next, I think, next year or the year after. That's I think that this team is the – those two are the, the best to make a immediate jump. I think – I think the Boston New York route is closer to Yeah, but the Boston that's what I'm saying but the Boston or New York route already had like their best two players like and, and then they had sort of a, a, a I'm saying they they had three starters that were part of going to the finals like three starters. Yeah, yeah, no, no. no I'm sorry, four starters that was already on that team. Because Al Horford was a starter, yeah. Derek White was a starter, and, and and Brown and Tatum were starters. So I mean, they still yeah. have four starters returning. Then you add in pieces. The Knicks technically have four starters and five starters, arguably that's coming back. But we got two. So you got yeah. to me. I got to look at it differently. It's not. It's not filling holes. It's filling the roster. Yeah. Well, remember, we this is all assuming Ubre, Lowry, and 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 uh, Batum are back too. Yes, yes. Um, that's that's what I'm saying. These this brings you closer to that. I think Demar and Paul. I'll give you Paul. Those guys being your third option, and then you fill in those other spots, especially with KCP. I think you're in a situation where you and then. Finney Smith fits different roles. You, you're in a situation where you're closer to me to beating the team that won the national check to win the um, NBA championship. Yeah. I think floor spacing. That's tough. I would say. Floor spacing is interesting. Floor spacing with what? I'm trying to compare like the best floor spacing team around these guys. That would probably be maybe C. Because Grant, I didn't know this, and I've been saying it on Twitter all week. He shot like 43% off catch and shoot last year off like five attempts. Yeah, he shot it well. Really impressive. So you got your spacer there. The reason why I do like the bridges in him is that Grant, I think, only averaged like three rebounds a game last year. And from six, eight, maybe you're four, that's not going to go down well. We'll get dominated on the boards. Bridges, on the other hand, is very active on the board. So he can compensate that for a little bit and he can kind of be your slasher type, right? Um, I kind of see that as your, your Aaron Gordon and Porter Jr., uh, Eric. Yeah. Between Grant and, and, uh, and bridges, right? And then you get your KCP type in either Beasley, Melton, or Harris. So, which Harris actually was like their KCP before they traded him, right? Before they replaced yeah. him eventually. He was Denver's. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Who would you prefer? I think we talked about this last week. I'm not sure. Would you prefer for the similar contract they're expected to get would you prefer KCP or Clay? Me? Yeah. Um, I mean, it really depends on what role I'm looking for. Am I looking for just a spot up shooter, or am I looking for someone that's going to give me close to twenty points a night? I would say it depends on the role. Anywhere, anywhere you see KCP in these, would you rather have KCP or Clay in that same lineup? I mean, I would say Clay. Yeah, Clay. Yeah. Interesting. 
Interesting. Yeah. Again, I don't think – I think all these lineups you you are good. I think yeah, they're good teams. They're contending. Yeah. Um, Dude, that's why I said initially I didn't see anyone that I felt just popped off the screen. I felt like this this letter was so much better than everyone else. I think you'd have the most depth with D. Yeah. And I think B and C, you could withstand being without a guy for a little while and you we wouldn't be in trouble. A gives us the most like top end. But we'd also be in major trouble if someone got injured. Like we'd be we'd be we'd be hurting if someone got injured. Whereas the other ones, I think we could still, you know, manage to keep it together and go like five hundred in Joel's absence. Um, but a if Joel got injured and you're looking at just a Maxi and George scoring punch to lead you through the season, I don't know how that would go. Um, whereas, like, let's say Joel got injured with D. Right, you still had Maxi, KCP, DeRozan, DFS, and then your backup five. That's still winning some games there. That's still a, that's still a formidable squad, even with like. Yeah, Joel. I mean that's if if I'm picking one, I'll I'll pick D. If I'm just picking one. Yeah, I like that one. But you ask me tomorrow, I may change. <laughs> yeah, right. Right now, I think I go. Oh man, B or C, it's tough. I'd go. I think I'd go B. And everyone dogs Grant's contract, but I mean, I think it's. I don't think it's a bad contract at all. I mean, he makes twenty nine next year. He is signed for another th- four years, I believe. But with the way the cap's going to be skyrocketing, that's not going to look like a big number in two or three years from now, right? I mean, when he's making thirty four, when the cap's like one seventy, one eighty, it's not going to seem like a big deal anymore. So, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think that's yeah. Well, if yeah. you have a great time picking this, what about you, Marcus? I think I'd I think I'd be fine with any B, D, or C. I think A is the only one I'm like I I I'd be very scared against that. And luckily, that's probably the least least chances of that happening is Paul George coming to uh, Philadelphia. Of all these, um, I think there's a higher chance of these other things happening before Paul George coming to Philly. Uh, based on reports, um, but yeah, I probably go with Eric on this one with D. I, that, that's just a, that's a it gives us depth. I mean, and it also, I mean, Maxi at the one, DeRozan at the two, KCP at the three, and I guess what Dorian Finney Smith to play four with uh, MB at five. Would that would that be? I mean, that's a that's a solid starting five right there. That's a that, that's a team. I, I think the, the the one thing I think is underrated with D is Demar DeRozan's ability to close games. Yeah. And then to have Maxi the ability to play off of him and be a more of a catch and shoot player. So I think that's a little underrated. What do you also think about the people saying like they, they they're dying for Butler to come back, but they're so anti DeRozan? I don't think I mean they're different players, but I don't see how you can be totally gung ho for Butler, but be anti DeRozan. I don't think they're I, that I, different. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand that conversation. I, I don't know. That's, I think that's just a personal preference. But player scheme fit wise, they're not that far off as far as Philadelphia is concerned, right? Yeah, I mean, they they they're the way they play aren't really the same. I, I just think that you probably view them as far as both wanting to go one on one and kind of taking mid range shots as being similar. Yeah, um, but to me, that's the the only similar thing. But how they go about doing it is different. Um, they both but, go to the free throw line more than like any other wing in the league. That's another thing. Too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, Jimmy goes on those runs fr- from game to game. You know, I think Demar can go on those runs in game um, more often. Well, he'll have five points, and all of a sudden he has twenty five. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy will have a run where he's averaging fifteen, and then all of a sudden he's averaging twenty five for five straight games. Where it takes over in the playoffs. I mean, with Demar's, it's done the same thing. So they both had great careers. So um, I think it's just a personal preference if someone chooses one and totally against another. What if they said screw it and they found a way to get like Demar and Jeremy Grant? What would you say then? I like that. I like it. 
You know, you had to work the number. You had to work the numbers for me, but you know, I like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd have to work the numbers for me. So yeah, <laughs> Demar would have to work the numbers to, to, to not yeah. take everything he wants. Is what it would have to happen. We'll see. It's gonna be interesting. Jeremy, Jeremy Grant coming back to Philadelphia to complete the process would be amazing. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> the complete 360 right there. Him being one of the first guys drafted for the Sixers, then coming back. Um, yeah, but, yeah that would be cool. Yeah, guys, so in 48 hours, at 6 o'clock Sunday is when things will start to happen. Uh, hopefully, Maury's got some uh, got some stuff and tricks up his sleeve because uh, he's, he's got his legacy on the line, according to Tasia, Eric. At well, we'll, legacy know, on the line. <laughs> we'll, we'll know tomorrow with uh, George because his, his opt-in deadline's tomorrow, I think, 5 p.m., right? Yeah, so that's the first domino to fall of this whole uh-huh. thing. But I've kind of already I'm, – I'm resigned to the fact that he's no longer in play for he us. He could opt out and then resign. Yeah. There's that option. Um. But they, Winhorse said today, it's pretty much three options. It's opt in and get traded to the Warriors, re-sign with the Clippers for free agency in Philly. Yeah, that, that was the last one he snuck in there. He's pretty much said it's 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 done with Philly. And that's that's what Winhorse has said. But he still keeps throwing it in there. But I, I think it's I think it's over for us. But we'll find out in a couple days. But uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you guys next Friday when this team's probably going to be completely different than what it is right now. Um, and I'm. It's going to be exciting times this week. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode and we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Take it easy.